It's uh, crack of dawn here in uh, Auburn Hills, and uh, we're packed up. We're ready to go. Um, we've uh, uh, we've kind of charted out our course. We've told everybody where we think we're going to be making it to when. Um, we're going to be seeing a lot of friends along the way, but we actually have to talk about one friend who made a lot of this uh, a lot of this possible, and that's Savic and. Um, I want to again thank them for their uh, generous donation and uh, these wonderful stickers. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be uh, taking off. Corey, got any words? Yeah. Our first stop is Indianapolis. If you're following us on Twitter or Instagram, um, you can follow our journey along. And a lot of people who bought the bumper stickers to help support the purchase of the vehicle, thank you very much. And the teardown is most likely going to happen in January after we get done with this 4,000 mile road trip. So um, follow along the journey. It's going to be pretty wild. Yeah. I think we have 10 cities planned and um, we look forward to uh, talk to you. Okay, boys and girls, <laughs> I found something I really don't care much for. Um, I was working on my computer and now I can't move. I can't get my hand in here to undo the seat belt. It, I don't bend in that direction. So I really do not like this. This seat belt is, uh, is in a bad location. And now, hey, Corey, <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe that, I can't believe I cannot get my hand around to get out. Wow, I don't want to spill the coffee either. There, there we go. Sandy. Okay, thanks. Hey, Let's try and do come something here. Okay, so uh, now we'll find out, as you, as all of you know, Corey hits deers and all kinds of shit. So on the way up, hopefully we've got a picture. Corey smashed into something else. I don't know what the heck it was. I was too busy crying. Oh, oh, oh look at that. No, got it right in the. It, it was a. Uh, Looks like it got tar on it. No, I'm talking close to you so that I get the audio. It was clearly a piece of exhaust that was smashed down. It was about that long, this wide. So it was like metal that you had, that had gotten run over. And as it was bouncing, I remember seeing it like, like this. Oh, what right I saw was uh, was like a like a like a boomerang shape. But thank God we left this on. Yeah, that, that down there can that can be buffed repaired. out. Yeah. But if it would have hit up here, that's a little. Well, here it is. It's a nice vehicle. One last kick <laughs> at the new way of getting the job done. The exhaust part. <laughs> <laughs> An exhaust pipe hit it. So, anyways. Um, uh, so far, I've only been in the back seat because I had a whole bunch of uh, emails and crap to do. So Corey and Eric were up in the front. Sitting in the back seat is okay. I like that it's comfortable. Couldn't get out of the seat belt. Didn't like that. Um, and there's a little bit of wind noise on uh, on my ear. I'm on the uh, I'm on the passenger side. So uh, I'm, we're gonna check that out. See what what causes that. It's got to be right in there. Yeah. Oh, that shouldn't, that shouldn't make any noise at all. It's got the little, oh, there we go. It's got a, okay, so if we look up in here, you can see that the, um, that little part right there is probably what's causing the whistle. Yeah. Yeah, it folded instead of staying straight. Oh, well, it's tucked in. Could be an installation issue, could be, could be a lot of things, but that shouldn't be like that. <clears throat> so anyway. Oh yeah. See if Yeah, it, it folds, folds it right up. Yeah. That needs to be stiffer. More overlap. 
Oh, don't worry. We'll just park. Uh, we'll just park Eric back there. That's all. <laughs> okay, so that's it. This was our uh, our first little clip. We're gonna take quick charging here, so we've uh, pulled in. We'll be here for about 10 minutes or something like that, long enough to hit the restroom and uh, run back, and then we'll be on our way again. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back, Monroe Live. Um, so I had the chance to drive this from Auburn Hills to Toledo. We had to stop in Toledo to top off the charging. We charged for about 35 minutes. We're now headed to Indianapolis, and my first impression of driving with the yoke is, I'd say, good. In a parking lot, it's awkward, and that's because it's not a circle. And, and the way I drive, and I think Sandy and I talked about this, I, I like the top of the steering wheel. I like holding the top of the steering wheel, but I realized that would not be conducive to driving this vehicle because the screen, the cluster right here, the screen in the cluster is so useful and so prominent. It is kind of a luxury not having the top of the steering wheel blocking the view. And now I can see why they prioritize the view of this screen versus having the top of the steering wheel. Um, at highway speeds, I have it on, there's three settings for the steering wheel. I have it on the most aggressive. I think it's the stiffest one. And it's nice, it has a nice tight feel. And you never get any indication that, you know, you're not in control at all. This vehicle has a lot more road noise than the Model 3 that Sandy and I took on the 8,000 mile trip. And this trip only being roughly 4,000 miles, this is child's play. And we're only driving in five to eight hour chunks at most. Um, so this will be a real nice trip. And as you can see on the screen, we're in Toledo right now and we're making the full trip all the way to Indianapolis. But this car being lower than the Model 3 and with the adjustable air suspension I think it rides you know really nice for what it is for how wide and how low it is and we still can hear that wind noise in the back corner so there's a little bit of a problem with the seal it's very noticeable back by Sandy's head uh, we're gonna try and wiggle that around to get that to stop whistling but other than that it's smooth it's quiet and uh, we got a long trip ahead of us Oh, uh, one other thing I want to comment on is the lack of a turn signal stock or your windshield wiper stock or the drive stock. With that being gone, it, it is, it's a nice luxury to be able to just use your thumb for turn signal left and then it knows when you get over and automatically turns off or turn signal right to cancel. If you accidentally hit it, you just tap it again. Very intuitive. For lights, you just touch right here. For flash, you hold it down. Your high beams stay on. Horns, horns right there. Oh, my wife's calling. Cancel that. And then for windshield wipers, you hold this down, and they automatically come on. Then you can use your left wheel right here to select auto one, two, three, or four. So right now, I have it on auto. Yeah. And then this button right here, the last button, is for your voice commands where you can, you know, control navigation, the radio, whatnot. You know, our strength is not the general car reviews. I know everyone's really looking forward to tearing into this to see what's underneath the skin. Stay tuned in January when we finally get back from the trip and we're going to tear the car down. Well, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for welcoming us here. And um, 
later I guess we can go back and you can, uh, you know, fuel the car and whatnot. Um, I really appreciate you all coming out. This is, uh, uh, this is our first stop and it's uh, kind of a surprise to see so many. I didn't know there was going to be this many folks. So anyways, thank you all for coming. quick recap of day one. So I really want to thank Mitch, who is the leader of the Indian, Indiana Tesla Club. He organized a nice meet and greet. Um, there ended up being roughly 30 people there. We met at a nice restaurant. And then Bradford Ferguson gave Sandy and I a really nice gift. Uh, thanks to Bradford Ferguson. He said some really nice words to Sandy, and I think we have some, some, some clips of that. Now, I drove the entire way from Detroit to Toledo. We charged in Toledo. We drove from Toledo all the way to Indianapolis, charged in a parking deck in Indianapolis. And I want to talk about the charging experience. So in Toledo, uh, the vehicle charged relatively quickly. I think we were at 150 kilowatt uh, charge station. We were there for about 35 or 40 minutes. And we made a long stretch from Toledo to Indianapolis. When we got to Indianapolis, we did a, a 72 kilowatt charge station in a parking garage, but we knew we were gonna stay there for the better part of two hours. And it took two hours and 30 minutes to charge all the way up. But the parking garage charge units are more made for you to park, go in and shop. So that was actually okay. But then the one thing we didn't like is uh, we drove to Louisville on our way to Atlanta, well, from Louisville to Nashville. And we get to Louisville, we get to a Kroger parking lot, and it's a charge station just like this. We get our own charge station, and it's charging painfully slow. I took a picture of it. It was uh, 36 kilowatts, 20, it was like 100 miles per hour, and we went and ate at a Burger King, and we had to sit there for the better part of an hour and wait and wait and wait and uh, that I didn't like and and after we got going I don't know if it was a bad plug or if there was something going on uh, but that was awkward then we we drive all the way to Nashville we charge in Nashville when we get to Nashville and charge it was charging like crazy and the whole thing was full all eight or ten spots were completely full and it charged the whole thing up in 25 minutes we barely got back to the car and so the charging experience has been really good for Sandy and I. We've been in a car total now 9,000 miles on road trip. And that Kroger parking lot was the first time we ever noticed like a bad experience where it didn't charge at a supercharger like we expected. And I guess 55 or 60 charging stations we've been to, we've had one moderately bad experience. As for driving the car, I know Sandy keeps saying that, you know, I hate the yoke. I love the yoke at speed, especially the turn signal buttons, which I like not having to reach forward. And what I've noticed is the HMI of the vehicle. When you're looking forward, you can see everything. And if you've ever gotten in a car they, and they put buttons down behind the steering wheel, you can't see them unless you bend over. In this Tesla, everything you want to see is completely unabated. You can see all of the buttons on the steering wheel. There's nothing behind the steering wheel. There's no stocks. You don't have to look over the stock to figure out how to turn the windshield wiper on. Then the screen is unblocked by the top of the, the top of the steering wheel, and then everything is on the screen. There's no mystery as to where anything is. So the transition from ICE to EV, I think is gonna be difficult for a lot of people if they're used to the traditional ice engine buttons and switches and gauges but this model s plaid i think also the model s long range i think is a really good step in the right direction to make it really easy if you were to rent one of these um, uh, sandy's going to drive either today or tomorrow uh, he was really busy with some work and um, he mentioned the wind noise we've been trying to figure out how to get this solved. I'm ready to put a piece of tape here to see if it fixes it. But 
Other than that, um, we did switch the suspension to the comfort mode and um, Eric and I immediately noticed a difference from sport. It got real rough real fast. Comfort, it got real soft. So with as wide a tires as this has, I think 285s in the rear and 255s in the front, you wouldn't know it. And uh, it really is an impressive ride. And we'll give you more updates as we keep uh, rolling along. But thanks for the day one update. Um, this, they've removed the, uh, the, uh, the power uh, uh, curve that you used to have, that we have oh. in the Model 3, mm. and that, that's so th that kind of like That is the, the energy screen. So in the Model 3 on our trip, we loved pulling up on long stretches. The, it's the energy screen where it shows, it starts off green, it goes to yellow and red, and it tells you the percentage you're going to get to. It's a graphical form of how much you're gonna have over your trip, and it even factors in elevation. That was great, we, we loved it. I got in this car, we're halfway from Toledo to Indianapolis, and I'm touching every single button trying to find it. Come on, Tesla, bring back the energy screen in this. Uh, we'd really love that. Okay, here we are at the end of day one. Uh, we've been uh, to Indianapolis. We met with the Indianapolis Tesla Club. We got a really cool gift, I mean, I'm really excited about that. Um, we've uh, we even sold a few t-shirts. Things were uh, things were good. Um, we found a couple of little problems with the car. Uh, one is um, there's something going on right in this area right here. So uh, we're gonna send uh, send some pictures off to Tesla. This uh, this is a whistling noise. We know how to get it get rid of it <clears throat> but it's something that should be addressed on the vehicle. Uh, right from the get-go. Um, apart from that, car drives like a dream. Um, any seat you want is uh, is good. The front seats are spectacular. The rear seats, um, they're they're kind of like average. But I'm telling you, this is a beautiful car. Beautiful car for driving, for riding in. It's a it's a fabulous thing. So, anyways, again, I'd like to thank our friends over at uh, Sabic. For, uh, for helping sponsor this trip, and uh, we'll talk to you from the end of day two.